In today's video, we're going to be creating this particular abstract pendulum. We're going to be tackling this like a puzzle so that we implement our ideas and use really simple math to actually figure out the path that should be created to perfectly follow the pendulum as you can see on screen. It should be a very fun one. So let's actually begin the tutorial. The first thing that we want to do is create the actual gem, which is going to act as the bob of our pendulum. Of course, you could use any object, but I'm going to use a gem. And for that, I'm going to tap X and delete the default cube. And I'll use an extra object that's present within the extra objects add-on. You have to go to edit, preferences, add-ons, and search for extra objects. And there, as long as you have the add mesh extra objects checked, you can always press shift A and under mesh, find all of these extra options. I'm going to go to diamonds and under diamonds, I'm going to choose the gem. Now, before I do anything, I'm going to go to this drop down over here and just change the radius and things like that till I get something that I'm happy with. And of course, this can be customized to exactly your requirements and what you want from this scenario. Once you have something that you're happy with, you can go ahead and move it above the base plane. So we'll have to press G Z and then lift it till it's just above the origin. If you want to make sure you're doing it precisely, you can press one to go into your front view and you have to make sure that it's just above the plane. I don't want it to be perfectly at the origin because I want there to be a little gap from the floor. So that's why I'll keep it at some place like this. Now we can parent this to an empty, which will allow us to create the pendulum like swinging motion. So I'll press shift A and search for an empty plane axis. And then I'll press G Z 10 to move it up by 10 units. Now I'll select this gem. I'll shift select the empty and I'll press control P and I'll choose set parent to object. So now with the empty selected, I can just rotate it about the Y axis and move it just like this, which is the exact motion that I want. Now, of course, if we switch off overlays, you can't see any connection from the gem to the empty. So I'll have to create that, which will act like our string. And for that, I'll just use the empty itself by selecting it and pressing tap to go into edit mode or using this drop down over here. Then I'll select all of these top faces. An easy way to select it is by going to face select mode by tapping the number three or pressing this button, tapping seven to go into the top view and tapping C to open circle select and just selecting all of these faces with a single click. Now I'll press shift D to duplicate it and I'll press S to scale it down to a very small size, which will be the thickness of my string. I'll go with the value of 0.1. Then I'll simply zoom out and press E and extrude it till it crosses my empty. And then I'll press tab again to go into object mode. And this is the string. If at all you feel like this is still too fat, you can just hover over it and tap L to select all the linked faces. And then you can scale it on everything but the Z axis by pressing shift Z and just scaling it down even more. Next, you can start with the animation of the pendulum. So let's increase our timeline a bit. Go to the output properties, change your resolution to whatever you want, frame rate to whatever you want as well. I'll go with a frame rate of 60 frames per second. End frame, I'll keep it at 300 so that it's a five second long animation. Output folder can be wherever you want it to be. File format, I'm going to choose FFmpeg video. Encoding, I'm going to change the container to MPEG-4 and output quality as perceptually lossless. Then I'll press the back arrow to go to frame zero. And on frame zero, I'll select just the empty and rotate it on the Y axis by 30 degrees. Then I'll tap I and choose rotation so that we have a keyframe for the rotation. Then I'll go halfway through the animation, which is frame 150. And I'll press R, Y minus 60 so that it goes to 30 degrees in the opposite direction. Then I'll tap I rotation. And now on frame 300, which is the last frame, I'll simply duplicate this first keyframe by selecting it and pressing shift D and going all the way till there and placing it. So that way I should have a perfectly looping animation. Now the animation is set to Bezier, which means it actually slows down towards the ends, which is exactly what we want. However, I don't want it to actually have a Bezier interpolation. I want it to have a sinusoidal interpolation. For that, I'll have to tap A to select everything and then press T and the easing by strength, I'll choose sinusoidal. However, the problem with just selecting sinusoidal is you can see it just stops abruptly at the end, which means it's easing only while going in, but it's not easing while going out. So to change that down here again, you can press Control E and then choose ease in and out. That way it'll slow down both at this end and at that end, which will cause a really nice sinusoidal motion as it swings from one side to the other, as you can see. Now we're going to be using geometry nodes to actually create the path, which is going to be present underneath this pendulum. So to add in a geometry node object, we'll press shift A and search for a mesh and use anything. I'll just use a cube and I'll rename it to path. Then I'll go to the junction of these two windows, click and drag to create a new window. And I'll change this from the 3D viewport to the geometry node editor. Then I'll press this plus button to create a new geometry node tree. And I'll select the group input and tap X to delete it. The main idea that we're going to be focusing on is creating a path that goes along the Y axis. However, it should move along with this pendulum. The pendulum has two motions. One is in the X direction, as you can see, and the other is in the Z direction, which is an up and down motion. So the path that we create has to be displaced on the x axis 
as well as the Z axis. So let's first create the path by pressing Shift A and searching for a curve line. Then we'll plug this curve into the group output. And right now, this is not the direction of the path that we want. We want it to start at negative 10 on the Y and end at plus 10 on the Y. So let's change the start to minus 10 on the Y and we'll change the end to a value of zero on the Z and 10 on the Y. So that way we get a 20 meter long path that starts at minus 10 and ends at plus 10 of the Y. Now, first we'll start with the X axis displacement but to actually displace this you need more points to be present because right now a curve has only a starting point and an ending point so let's create many more points by searching for a resample curve node and plugging that in after the curve line now i want this to be really nice and smooth so i'm going to make the count a really high number let's go with 1000 and because we're going to be duplicating this i'm actually going to have one extra and i'm going to keep it at 1001 now i'll press shift a and search for a set position node so that we can change the position of these various points that we just created along the path now, remember, we wanted to move it along the x-axis. So we need to change only the x-axis value, but we don't have access to just the x-axis value. So we're going to have to add a combined xyz node so that we get access to just the x-axis. Now let's plug this into the offset and start playing around with the values. So essentially, this line is now made up of 1001 points that have indices that go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on and so forth. So we can actually use the indices of each of these to help displace it along a sinusoidal curve. So I'll press Shift A and search for an index node, which will give us access to the indices. And then I'll press Shift A and search for a math node, which we will be using to normalize these index values. So right now the indices go from 0 to 1001. I want it to go from 0 to 1000. So I'll take this index, plug it in here, and I'll divide it by 1000. And that way, the output of this will range from 0 to 1. Now, because the input of sine goes from 0 to 2 pi, which means 0 to 360 degrees, we need this value to go from 0 to 360 degrees or 0 to 2 pi radians. For that, again, we can simply multiply this by 2 pi. So let's shift this to the side. Duplicate the divide node and change it from divide to multiply and plug this into the first socket and change the second socket value to 2 star pi or you can type in tau which is also equal to 2 pi tau. Now this is going to be the input to a sine function. So let's press shift a and search for a math node and change it to sine which is under the trigonometric section. And if you plug this in, we will get sine of whatever angle as the output. Now we can plug this into the x-axis value and that gives us a perfect sine wave. However, if you look at it, the sine wave is clearly not going far enough to reach the ends at which the pendulum reaches. So if you see the sine wave ends right here, but the pendulum is going way beyond that. If we let the animation play, you can see the pendulum reaches a maximum height around here, which happens to be five units. Now we could simply multiply it by five, but it's good to figure out why it's five units first. So if you actually take a look at this, we know that this point is the pivot and this particular distance from here to the tip was equivalent to this particular distance, which we already knew was 10 meters because we moved this empty 10 meters high. Because this distance is not changing, this is forming an arc and this distance is also 10 meters. Hopefully that makes sense. So now that we know that this is 10 meters, we can form a right angled triangle where this is 90 degrees and we need to know this particular distance. If we call this distance as X because it's on the X axis, and we know that this max angle was 30 degrees because we actually moved it like that, we can use simple trigonometry to figure out what x is. Remember from trigonometry, sine of any angle such as theta is going to be equal to the perpendicular divided by the hypotenuse. The perpendicular could be called the opposite side based on what convention you're using. So therefore we have sine of 30 degrees is going to be equal to the value that we want, which is x divided by the hypotenuse, which is 10. Now sine 30 is half, so we get half is equal to x by 10, and we can multiply both sides by 2 to get this as 1 and this as 5, and this will imply that x is equal to 5 units. So the max displacement over here is going to be 5 units, so we need this sine wave to have an amplitude of 5 units to reach all the way over there. So here, since the output of this sign is always ranging from 0 to 1 or minus 1 to 1, we can search for a math node and simply multiply this value by a value of 5. So if we multiply this by 5, it reaches this tip, which is exactly what we want. So now we have a sinusoidal wave, which is going till the absolute extremities of this pendulum. But we now need to lift it based on its actual x-axis position. So to lift it, we're going to go ahead and use another set position node. So let's select this, press Shift D and plug it in. Now we need to move it on the z-axis. So let's press Shift A and search for a combined XYZ so that we get access over the z-value. And now we're going to actually figure out what this z-value should be. For that, let's get back to doing a lot more math. 
if you look at this pendulum, we already concluded that this arc that it forms is a part of a circle because we have a fixed point in the center and a fixed distance from that center. So if this is an arc formed as a part of a circle, the circle must have some equation. Now remember that this is the x-axis and this is the z-axis. So we should have a circle about the x and z axes where this would be the x-axis and this would be the z-axis. So the equation of this circle is going to be x squared plus z squared is equal to the radius squared. However, the center of this circle is not present at the origin. The center of this circle is present 10 units above, which means it's 10 units on the z-axis. So if you actually look at the general equation for a circle with the centers separated, we have to take the coordinates of the center and subtract the x-coordinate from the x-value and the z-coordinate from the z-value to get it. So this center currently has a coordinate of 0, 10. So we have to subtract 0 from x and 10 from z to get the right equation. So in this case, it'll become x minus 0 squared plus z minus 10 whole squared is equal to r squared. Now we know the value of r is also 10. So this is going to imply that x squared plus z minus 10 whole squared is equal to 10 squared. Now, since we want to know what the z value should be based on the x value, the z value should be the dependent variable and the x value is going to be the independent variable. So we have to change the subject of formula to find out what z is equal to. So that means we can take z minus 10 whole squared is equal to 10 squared minus x squared. This is just subtracting x squared on both sides. And then we can take the square root on both sides. So we get z minus 10 is equal to the square root of 10 squared minus x squared, which finally implies that we get z is always going to be equal to under root 10 squared minus x squared plus 10. Now we have to model this particular equation for the z value in this combined x, y, z. And it's actually very easy to do. We're going to keep this on screen so that we can actually see the formula and start creating it right here. The first thing is we need the x value. So to get the x value, we can search for a position node and we can separate out the x, y, z so that we get just the x. Now the x value has to be squared. So let's press shift A and search for a math node. We'll switch it to power. And then we're going to plug this x into the base and we're gonna change the exponent to two. Now this value is x squared and we need to do 100 minus this value. So let's go ahead and bring this to the side and then press shift A and search for a math node, change it from add to subtract, and we're gonna do 100 minus this value. So let's plug this into the second socket. And now we have this whole term. Now we need to add 10. So let's press shift A and search for a math node, plug this in and add in a value of 10. And we can simply plug this into Z, but we won't get exactly what we want. And I'll explain why. If we plug it into Z, when we actually look at this, suddenly we can't find the path anymore. It's no longer present there in the nice sinusoidal direction that we had. Now, there are a few reasons for this. The first reason is that we did not take the square root over here. We've subtracted 100 minus X squared as the output over here, and then we just added in 10. We first have to take the square root. Let's take this power math node, press shift D and plug it in here. And this time we're gonna make the exponent as 0 0.5, which is equivalent to the square root. So once you've done that, if you actually search for it now, you'll be able to find that we have the path, but it's present up here. And that's because remember, this is a quadratic equation that we just solved. And there are actually two solutions. If you actually look at the circle for every x-axis value, there are two z values. There's one up here and there's the exact mirror image, which is down here. Both are valid solutions to the equation. Right now, if we look at the path, we have the one that's on top which means it's taking the positive solutions. We actually want the negative solutions. So we have to take the negative of whatever we have, and we can do that by either taking in zero minus this value, or we can just multiply it by minus one. And that has to happen in this step over here before we add the 10. So let's shift this 10 to the side and then press shift A and search for another math node. And we can switch this to multiply and multiply it by a value of minus one and plug this in right here. As soon as we do that, we should have the path exactly as we wanted. Now, if you go to the front view, it should seem like we are perfectly sweeping this particular path, which is exactly what we have. And that looks brilliant. Now let's go ahead and remove all of this. And then let's figure out how to animate this path to follow along this pendulum swing. That's also very easy to do. And we can do it by going to frame zero, where it's at this extreme position and pressing GY and bringing this path back by minus five units so that it's perfect perfectly there underneath. Then with this path selected, we'll tap I location. And then at frame 150, where it's on the opposite edge, we'll just press G Y and we'll move it by 10 units so that it's perfectly underneath and we'll tap I location. Then to have this continue to move, we'll tap A to select everything and press T and first change this to linear 
and then press shift E and choose linear extrapolation. So that way we'll get a perfect animation where this keeps moving exactly where the pendulum is, as you can see right here. However, it just ends over here. We want it to continue. So that's also going to be fairly simple. All you have to do is press shift D Y and then move it back by 20 units and then remove the keyframes for this new wave that we created by coming down here and pressing A to select everything and X to delete the keyframes. Then shift select the original path that we had and press control P and choose set parent to object. Now you can repeat that process by again, selecting this one, pressing shift D Y and just moving it to the side. And then for the other side, we can select this, press shift D Y and bring it over and again, shift D Y bring it over. You can repeat this as many times as necessary to make it a perfectly looping animation. Now that is exactly what we have and it looks perfect, but we need to give this path some thickness because it shouldn't just be a line. We're going to deal with that in the geometry node section as well. So after the set position, let's go ahead and convert it from a curve to an actual mesh. So let's press shift A and search for a curve to mesh node. Plug that in here for the profile curve. Let's press shift A and search for a curve line. We'll plug the curve line into the profile curve and we essentially want it to have some thickness. So I'll change this end value on the Z to zero and we'll have the start on the X at something like minus one and the end on the X at something like plus one so that we have the pendulum going perfectly through the center of this path, as you can see. Now we need this path to have some thickness as well. So to give it some thickness, we'll extrude it by searching for an extrude mesh node, plugging that in right after the curve to mesh, but I'm going to switch off individual. And I also don't want it to have this smooth shading. I want it to be shaded in flat. So I'll press shift A, search for a set shade smooth node, plug it in right here, and I'll uncheck shade smooth so that it becomes shaded flat. Now the offset is going up. I don't want it to go up. I want it to go down. So I'm going to change this offset scale from plus one to minus one. And that way it goes down. However, this causes the top face to just be empty. So that's a very simple fix, which is searching for a joint geometry node, plugging that in here and joining the original mesh back with it. So now that we have everything set over here, maybe an offset scale of minus 0.6 is good enough. We can start the actual shading and texturing, which is going to be very simple. The first thing that we have to do is actually set the material. So let's press shift A, search for a set material node, plug that in after the set shade smooth and choose the default material. Then we'll go to our shader editor by changing this from the geometry node editor to the shader editor and we'll select the default material. To see the changes, we'll have to switch our viewport shading to render. And in our render properties, we'll just switch on bloom and screen space reflections. And then in our shader editor, press PJ on your numpad to centralize all the nodes and then zoom in and start playing around with these colors. I'm going to make it completely metallic so that there are really nice reflections. I'm going to increase the anisotropic all the way to one and reduce the roughness down to maybe 0.2. Next, I'm going to position my camera by selecting the camera, pressing Alt G and Alt R to clear location and rotation, followed by zero to go into my camera view and then pressing GZ to just bring it back and then GY to move it back on the Y axis and then RX to rotate it about the X axis. Now I'll press GZ again to bring it back down, GY to move it back, and I'll just play around with it till I get some sort of a position that I like. So I'm pretty happy with this particular position. I think I can just move it up by a little bit more and that's perfectly all right. Now I'll select my light. I'll press Alt G to clear its location, GZ to bring it up. And then I'll add in a few more area lights here and there just to make everything look better. So choose an area lamp, GZ, maybe RX 90, GY, Go to the lamp properties, increase the power. Then I'll go to my world properties, change the background color all the way to black, switch off overlays, and then search for a few more lights. So another area light, I can just take this one, press shift D, alt R, G, Z, followed by G, Y. And once you're happy with the position of your lights and the way all of your lighting is looking, maybe you can start off with the material for your actual gem. So add in a new material. I'll make this also metallic. I'll reduce the roughness down to maybe 0.4 and I'll maybe change the base color as well to a slightly darker bluish color. And that's essentially my pendulum bob. If you want to be even fancier, you can add in volumetrics. So you can change from object to world and then here press shift A and search for a volume scatter, change the density down to maybe 0.01, plug this into volume. Now, when you do this, it's best that you take every single one of your lights and just change this volume setting all the way to zero for all of these lights that you've used, unless you want something like this, which also looks pretty cool. I'm going to select my camera, go down to viewport display and increase passport out all the way to once so that I see what it looks like with just the camera region rendered. And this looks pretty cool. So I think I'll leave it as is. Maybe I'll change the color of a few of these lights just like that. And I think that looks really cool. Once you're happy with the way everything's looking, you can go ahead and press render animation. I hope this was a fun one to figure out. And again, 
once you understand how to use math to parametrically design these different animations, the possibilities become limitless. There are innumerable applications and I'm sure you'll find many ways to implement them. So I post videos every single day. So until the next video comes out tomorrow, thank you so much for watching. Keep creating and don't forget to stay creative.